Someone asked me um, how I do some of the DeForce uh, cloth simulations in Daz, and I figured it'd be easier to make a video about it than explain the whole thing. Um, so if you don't know how to use DeForce um, cloth simulation in Daz, then that's what this is for. So I'm going to open Daz Studio. Okay, so for the uh, example that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the um, Daz horse, um, which is what I used in the piece of art that the person was asking about. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to use, I have a lot of products in here, but the one I used in that was DeForce Torn Clothes for Genesis 8 Mail. So I'm going to uh, load in the shirt. So basically what you have to do is make an animation. I usually leave the timeline just at 30 frames per second and just um, 30 frames worth. So you want to start with the thing all the way at the zero frame. And what you want to do basically is position the character that is going inside the shirt um, in a way that they fit into it. So with the horse, it's a little difficult because the anatomy is so different. Um, <clears throat> but I believe what I did, something like this. You can also scale them uh, up or down. And then you're going to have to try to figure out how to get the, the arms through the armholes. So for the horse, it's pretty difficult because the it's pretty limited in its range of movement. That's about all you're getting. Um, so what I would recommend is you go to your scene tab, um, go to chest, right click on chest under Daz Horse 2 and select children, so that'll select everything that is chest down, so it selected everything, um, <clears throat> the entire neck, the head, all the way down to the hooves. And then I would go here to your parameters tab, um, right click, hit edit mode, <clears throat> um, click on these, hold shift to select multiple at a time, so just select bend, side, side, and twist, um, right click on them, Go to Limits and Disable Limits. And then you can turn Edit Mode back off. <clears throat> so what that did was it disabled Bend Limits um, basically for all of these. So now I can move that as much as I want to. <clears throat> so for this you'd want to do um, also that, that thing there is the Pose Tool, the thing that shows up right here. Um, if you right click or you click on the top right here, click show pose tool, it'll bring that up. It makes it kind of easier to figure out how to do things because sometimes it gets a little confusing with, you know, when something is side to side or when it's twisted. Um, this allows you to just, if you click on this ball, you can kind of just move your mouse around and it'll move it in the direction that you're trying to put it in. So I think for fitting the arms, I think I did something kind of like something kind of like this and you're gonna have to mess around with the scale of things quite a bit in order to get it to work um, you're also gonna probably have to mess with the pose of the figure but since you're starting out on frame zero um, you can just if you don't make a keyframe before uh, you finish, you can uh, go to frame 30, um, select the horse, um, add a keyframe, and then click edit, uh, 
figure and zero figure and it'll put it back to what it was before so then you can see if we scrub through it it goes from the weird setup that we have to uh, the normal thing and also if you have a sort of uh, pose that you want the horse to end up in uh, you can pick one as long as you have the uh, last keyframe have the uh, playhead at the last keyframe and do something like this so then it'll end up there and it might end up better if it's facing the same way that it was in the beginning so and positioned about the same so I would kind of do something like that so that it's not moving and also turning the whole body around so I'm not sure if this setup is I don't I don't think this setup is good enough um, for this to actually work um, when I simulate it but I can try I think that's about what it ended up looking like in my other one um, so you're just gonna have to mess with um, this with a lot of parameters to try to get things to be somewhat normal looking as long as the arm is through the armhole and it's not colliding with it like it's colliding pretty bad there um, so sometimes you have to and the chest was poking through too so I'm just scaling the chest down a little <clears throat> and something kind of like that it's not perfect but I'm gonna leave it kind of like that for the purpose of the tutorial so now that we have this kind of set up somewhat um, and we have our final pose set up what you want to do is go to the first frame or you can click this button here we'll go between the last and first frames um, you're gonna click on simulation settings Make sure D Force is selected here. Um, you don't need to mess with really any of this stuff um, except for this one. Frames to simulate, tell it to simulate using the timeline play range, <clears throat> which will basically just, instead of simulating just this frame, it will simulate every single frame from 0 to 30. Um, start bones from memorized pose I would turn off because um, what that does basically is it resets the figures back to their original poses instead of this one that we have set up here so I would leave that the way it is um, another thing that you might have to change um, it's best to do this to just do a do a simulation see how it turns out um, gonna guess that this shirt is gonna basically explode because it's not set up to be able to stretch as far as we need it to so I'm just going to simulate this now and we'll see how it turns out okay so that didn't actually explode that time doesn't look super great it could be better it could have been positioned better I've got some weird distortion and stuff but if you do need to change that if you notice that when you start simulating your simulation almost stops and the, the mesh just starts freaking out and exploding and getting huge and going off in weird directions you can click on whatever you're simulating which is the torn shirt and deforce parameters are under the surface tab so we're going to go to the surface tab click on the torn shirt and then if you scroll down you get to about this point these are all the deforce parameters but really all you need to worry about if you want to fix this kind of thing is stiffness so what i would do is in your search bar here 
type in stiff for stiffness. And generally, if, I'm, if I want things to stretch out all, a ton, I'll set them all to about that pretty low. Um, so in this instance, we don't need to do that. But um, yeah, if you do, that's how you do that. Um, so if you got it looking the way you want, you can kind of see there are some like weird, sharp, jagged parts. What I would recommend doing is using mesh smoothing. Now this one already has mesh smoothing applied to it, but if something doesn't, you just make sure it's selected and go to edit, figure, geometry, and click add smoothing modifier and it'll add this menu into your parameters tab. So before you change this, I would recommend going to the simulation tab and freezing the simulation um, just in case. I think that'll just make it so the, the simulation that you have plotted out won't get erased. Um, so then go click on mesh smoothing. I would make sure this is set to base shape matching and under collision item, click on the item that the shirt is around, so the horse itself. So that did fix some of these. It's still a little jagged. If we turn it off, you can see the, the difference. If it's still looking pretty rough, you can up the uh, smoothing iterations and the collision iterations. Um, but when you do, it'll increase the amount of time that it takes for it to do that. Um, and then anytime you move your character around, it'll have to recalculate that. So I would recommend getting that looking the way you want, turn it off, and then before you render, turn it back on. And sometimes you get weird things like whatever's happening here and that. Um, and if you want to, I would recommend you mess around with it to get it to look the way you want. But um, yeah, that's basically it. That's how I simulate um, deforce clothes on uh, animal characters.